me This girl's going crazy We're the stage We are I love the beat of that song I love the beat of the song I love the sentiment of the song It's The irony is great Because we are crazy Yeah, uh, yeah. I We'll mean, judge I you think... for being crazy But uh, uh, we I love ourselves, being crazy Oh yeah Have definitely like Stalked IG pages <laughs> Sent inappropriate texts Text exes Listen Really I late get... drunk We've done all those crazy Really good girl crazy stuff. eyes Really good crazy eyes Just You know Do something crazy so it's appropriate, I it think. Is. And Slash you know what? Ironic. I love the little like whistle kind of beat in there a little Which bit so because good. it makes me. I'm like, oh, I it was the song of my summer. That's Bird Stall, Everybody, our uh, theme song, our awesome theme song, song of the summer. Yeah, Isn't it? it's like very upbeat. It is song of the summer. Starts off at a bang. We are the drinking broettes. Yes, we are. This is the beautiful and talented braided Tiffany Hart. Overrate it. And this is the amazing, extraordinaire podcast of podcasters, Jesse Wiseman. Braid sister. Who actually can really braid. Because yeah. you were a hairstylist, so you can yeah. legit French braid, and I just fake it till I make it. I've lived a bunch of different. I kind of like yours feels more secure because it's the fake braid with mm-hmm. the. Um, it, you know what's nice? It is secure, and I could make it as big as I want. Yeah. Like, once I make it small, if I don't like you it. You may be doing it right. I, I think could. you're doing the life right. I just looked at a YouTube video, and I was like, okay, girl, show me a fake braid since I I'm failing that. at life <laughs> when it comes to failing, failing at life. Failing a girl who can braid. Except for you aren't because we are live, you guys. I know. We're live. We're out. This We've been great. doing these shows, kind of getting them, getting ready for a launch that you guys can really dig your teeth into so mm-hmm. we have 10 episodes now but Dude. this is our lot we're here i know we're up this is exciting it's new. yeah like i woke up this morning like oh my it. god this is really cool this is really cool this is what we do we hope that you guys like it like i said uh you aren't gonna like us at first but ah. we hope that we grow on you and don't worry you will like us i mean you will be <laughs> like you know what those bitches were super annoying at first and then i was like you know what I like them, right? They're real bitches. We just want to be, we're like two girlfriends. Yeah. Hanging out with you. Do you th- and we're going to be at SHOT Show. Do you think at SHOT Show we're going to become best friends? You and me? Yeah, I think so. Probably. I mean, we'll, be, we'll become close. We'll be, er. we're all, I think every day we're becoming closer. I know. I was very You're so pretty. honored. Yeah. Because yesterday, because I, I, do, I don't ever want to push this on someone. Okay. Ever, right? Because right. everyone's different with things. Sure. Um, and, like, I know there was a few times I threw out there, like, oh, yeah, bring your kids. Or, like, I'll yeah, meet yeah. your kids. You're like, I want to meet those rascals. And I was yeah. like, they're annoying, and, but okay. Because I love kids. Yeah. Right? I'm a large kid myself. And uh, yesterday you were like, hey, do you want to come to Whole Foods with us and, you know, meet the, the two little ones and yeah. eat some lunch? And I was like, oh, my gosh, she invited me to her kids. It was like, like official. Yes. <laughs> right? It's right? official. Yeah. I want you to know them. Sure. Um, I've met your husband. Yeah. I've met your dogs. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm going to meet some of your good friends in yes. SHOT Show, hopefully. I'm excited about that. They may be on, which will be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know. I mean, this is, this is how friendships it's gonna are, be a though. long life. You can't force them, number one. No. And even me saying the best friend thing just now, like I felt uncomfortable, but it was kind of a joke, you know. Well, no, no, I, yeah. But well, like, when someone, have you ever had someone call you a best friend yes. and you're kind of like looking and going, yes. wait, are we? Yes. Wait, is this your definition of best friend? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, like, oh my gosh, you don't have any friends. <laughs> oh, I don't so even sorry. know you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, I've had some, I think I've had someone say that to me before. Like, I was like, we met once and, you know, it was like an acquaintance <laughs> oh. thing. And all of a sudden she's like, oh my God, yeah. She's like, what am I, be- well, she's oh. one of my good friends. Are we talking about someone? Are we talking I, about I the did, same person? Actually, I didn't even think about it, but now it just kind of hit me like, oh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. I sat there and was like, wait a second. Is this for real? Like, I didn't know we were even friends. We talked and hung out once. Well, now I kind of feel bad either because... I don't think the same way or maybe they have a looser, you know, definition of friendship than I do. Yeah. Because like, when I'm going to call someone my friend, I have legit hung out with them multiple times. I can vouch for them as being a le- like a good person, respectable person, something I would love, someone I would back up. Because yeah. when I have a friend and um, like I'm 
I don't want to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, they're like super awesome, but blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. I'm like, no, this person's rad as shit. Yeah. I love them. If you talk shit about them, I will kill you. Yeah. Um, they're my ride or die. That's how I am. I like that. I don't I call everyone like, my friend. Yeah. And as you get older, the you realize you 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 understand more that people come in and out of your life yeah. so much that like I think the real best like my last best best friend was when I was in my 20s do you know mm-hmm. what I mean or like early 20s where you're like this is it you can hang out all day you like get into trouble together you get into fights oh blah, yeah blah, blah. like this but is you still my make it out in the end and you're so closer this is my it. chick but then you realize like you start a family or they do and you don't or whatever and like you're not as close you still talk and they are your best friends because mm-hmm. they've been through all of you yeah do you know what i mean whereas now if you're meeting me um we can hang out all the time but i know how like seasonal that stuff is i know it, it's hard and well it's because it's life it's life so like you and i will like hang out all the time because we're doing this show yeah if something happened, it'd be like you have to work somewhere else or something like you lose touch. I'm so bad at calling people. I am too. I can text and be like, hey, what's up? How are you doing? But I'm so bad at keeping in touch. And there's a few people in my past, like from a long time ago, that understand that about me and mm-hmm. are cool with that. And I would say that they're probably my best friends more than someone I'm really close to right now, right? Mm-hmm. Because they know me. <laughs> Like, they really know you, right? Yes. So no, you do. have people, like, that. that's best friend, right? Well, say my girl, Charmaine, and I. What do you Charmaine call it now I, when you get older? You know what I mean? Right. So it has to be something else. I would still call Charmaine one of my best friends. The One of the only ones I still have. Yeah. We met in college my first year, so in 2005. Oh, those and, will be for life. Right? Yeah. And we did some messed up shit yeah. together. They've seen and you at your worst. And she has seen me at my worst. worst. And I've seen her at her worst. And we have fought to yeah. the tooth and nail but we also love hard and we still talk to this day i was just texting her the other day you know what i mean like she helps me with like some business stuff that i have going on because i'm always asking for advice yeah on like clothing and i'm always asking about her sister her sister's got surgery on her back you know asking our family and we are trying to meet up next year again so we still keep in touch i have a few girlfriends from high school that i'll keep in touch with every now and again and one from like middle school yeah but i I think it's it's not college early 20s where like you get into some trouble oh, yeah. you go through some shit oh, I was you a get crazy into bitch. fights you go out all the time you know about the first boyfriends the cheating the but all of the yeah. stuff you know all the stuff yeah because at that age you're and there's really, no really judgment honest. yeah it's exactly. just i love you for you yes because you can't judge somebody in their early 20s they're just like the amazing we were guess what Anything we were they do figuring out life and we were going to screw up nonstop. yeah this is how you get smart later on you make all the mistakes so the what do we call it when you're older right like a seasonal hire <laughs> do you know what I mean I don't know like what do you call it like I know there's certain people that I hang out with right now we yeah. hang out all the time like our kids hang out whatever but if I were to move or if they were to move or if something were to happen someone would get pregnant or whatever yeah that wouldn't there there isn't the baseline of really knowing me right is that yeah. weird Maybe you know that's a really shitty thing no way you know, to look at it my sis so my younger sister i remember she was having a conversation with me and she was very emotional and she's like i feel like it's harder to find a really good friend like a best friend more than it is trying to find a good boyfriend yes and i was like oh my god we have never heard truer words yeah um i think even nowadays too right with how busy like we're all older because i was even talking about with dan the other night i was like i had some of the best friends I was talking to them nonstop, but I was at school all day with them. And yeah. then I would get home from You're school forced to be in the yeah, situation. I, well, I would get home from school and then call them or hang out with them. But I also didn't really have much of a life. Like I didn't really have a job then. Yeah. When I was younger, I had homework, but that was it. So what I do, like I can play video games or watch TV. Like, of course I want to talk to my friends and socialize, but now it's like, I have so much stuff to do yeah. to keep up with. I want that someone, someone who's understanding right in front of you Mm -hmm. in order for you to be like okay let's hang out and that's hard nowadays because i know there's like apps where you can literally meet friends it's like a dating app but for friends like hey these are my hobbies these are the interests these are things i like weird i i personally thought it was weird when i think i saw someone post something about it but 
Makes sense. You know, I don't blame them because how else? And if you're not going out to the bars all the time. Yeah. You know, and if that's not your scene anymore, of course, I don't think you want to find a friend who's constantly going out and getting drunk and, you know, if that's no. not your thing anymore. No. So where do you meet them? Like the paint, like sipping paint things or the no. row, uh, the gym. <laughs> Uh, I don't like super, to talk to people at the gym. Right? I don't either. The supermarket. Like, I don't. Leave I've me alone. I've just friend. come from the gym. I'm okay. sweaty. Right? So that's what I'm saying is, where do you meet these people? Yeah, it's true. And I've been meeting a lot of people. Uh, I've been meeting a lot of great people online. But the problem with that is that we're so far away. Yeah. That by the time you meet someone, you're like, oh, we connect. I love your face. You're an amazing person. See you next time. Why do you live in Hawaii? Yeah. Listen, bitch, you got to move to North Carolina. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. And you can only FaceTime so much. Yeah. And I never do. I I'm, hate a FaceTime. I got used it. to it because my husband and I did long distance and that's what, and you know, deployments and stuff. So, so you just like do it. You got so used to Skype and FaceTime. Yeah. Because that's the only way you can have like a personal relationship with someone and kind of see them at the same time. Mm -hmm. But it's still not like my go-to. Yeah. I rather I'm I'm a much better in person person. I rather you know what I mean. I'm yeah. rather hang out with you in person. Yeah, and bond that way. Yeah, bad. I don't come off well in text. Sarcasm. I don't sometimes, think I do either. Yeah. Sometimes comes off as mean, and then if someone is, I saw a meme one time. It's like sending K is the equivalent of like shooting me in the face. Right? <laughs> if you just send a K back or OK, you do that. Sorry, I do. I no, spell no, but it OK, okay is like. Okay, but if it's K, I never do K. I, you know, I only do K if I'm upset. You literally I don't just stabbed words. me in the back. Yeah, I don't abbreviate words. So if I ever do, like it's like K, or if yeah, I, then I'll know you're mad. Huh? So Chris and I, what we'll do is like, um, if we're ever annoyed with each other and we're trying to be like kind of a passive aggressive, but we don't want to start stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, he'll say something and it'll be bothering me, so I will hold my tongue, like I won't say anything, but I'll put my thumb up like near his face, and I'll be like cool and he's like Ugh. right so our thing between each other and so for example when you give me thumbs up i take it as like cool mm -hmm. oh really well, we, no not from you in like, text oh well, okay do, me and him i use do, the thumbs up all the time no i know me and him Too do much. that so i realize i can't take that oh. the same way with you right like so I, just, I said, I over emoji because I don't want to come off as, so I'm like, smiley face, I, smiley face, somebody died. It's okay though. I'm fine. You know what I mean? You're like, I overuse calm down. exclamation points. It's like, I use, yes, it's, me too. Yes, it's so at we, the end of almost every sentence. Cause I'm afraid if I don't, then it might come across like stern. And then I'm like, oh, I'll throw a double one in here. Oh, here's a triple. Here's gosh, wouldn't it be great like, to be a guy that just doesn't care? I mean, the... The you mean Dan, 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 Ross, <laughs> Jared, anybody like the one word text that they send back with a blatant disregard to how that may come off is amazing. And they really don't care. They send it to sure. each other. They don't have to over explain anything. They literally just go, when are you going to be here? Fine. Good. But duh, A to B. There's sometimes when I'm busy, I will be like that. Yeah. But other times I will think about Hey, I don't want them to misconstrue this text. Right. Because I have l written out things before that have been misconstrued. And have sure. like upset people, whether it was sure. on social media or something. And I'm like, and I'm not like living in fear of it. But the last thing I want to do is like, whoa, 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 oh, wow, shit. I didn't mean to offend you. I'm yeah. so sorry. Like, that's the last thing I wanted to do. So now I'm sitting there going, do I need to rephrase things? Do I need to be careful of how this... However, I don't want to sit there and live and walk on eggshells and be like, oh, my God, I'm going to offend someone. So part of me is just like, eh, get over it. The other yeah. part of me is like, well, with certain people I care about, I don't want to yeah. offend them. Everyone, yeah. though, kind of like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to live my no, life to I please know. you. I know. Because everyone's butthurt about so many things nowadays. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. So, yeah, there has to be, like, I guess, a happy medium. I think those guys could care a little bit more, and I think we could care a little bit less. Yeah. Right? Yeah, because it a really balance. takes so much more time <laughs> to make the fucking text, like, okay. And that's why I call you a lot of the time. And, or that, I and I appreciate that. I call some people that, like, I like talking to. I'll be sure. like, hey, can I just call you because I'm going to try and make this text so nice, and it's going to take me five million years when I can just talk to you well, and you can hear my voice yeah one of my friends does those voice texts all the time that's all she does is audio text for me i like those they also self-destruct although i saw no, that you don't. kept mine yeah you can keep them why'd you keep that one i keep them all the time 
It's a keyboard thing. You have thing. to dis. You have to like. I have to know that no, it's no. like gone because oh, I was like well, talking I shit about somebody. No. Oh no no no. So what I do? I have a terrible memory. So I'll listen to it. Okay. And I'll be like, oh, okay. And then all of a sudden I'm trying That's to make... That's why the text is good, right? Because you go back to it. Right. So see, I'm trying yeah. to make mine back and I go, wait, wait, wait. I need to make sure I want to hit everything that she said, right? Like, and I'm I not do leave trying... a long because voice message. Too. what you do is so, for example, when I'm like texting any guy, if you ask them more than one question, they only answer one question. Yeah, the last you one. You ask them two or three... They happen to only answer one. And you're yeah. like, really? So that's why you only ask them one at a time. Yeah. So with girls, I feel like we're better at that. But for me, I sit there and go, I want to answer everything and address everything that you said, but okay. I don't remember it. So I save it to replay it like 15 times. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's why. Because in that exact message, I said, hey, I'm sending you a voice message because these things voice, these uh, self-destruct. And then I looked down and I saw that you kept it. Yeah. I was like, you fucker. <laughs> no, no. <'cause> <laughs> It's no, I'm just I was joking. Like I'm joking. Going, I'm like, joking. Yeah, and that's why I think I text you no, back. No, but my friend, yeah, my friend does those uh, maybe a bit too much because um, it's just you kind of just want to look down at something sometime sure. and not listen to the whole long thing. But happy medium with everything, right? Yeah, I feel less than learn. I uh, I'm a little bit illiterate with phones and computers. I'm not sure. the best with it. So I remember when I was trying to message my friend back doing the audio message. Yeah. Um, I kept making it, and then if you turn your phone to the side or do anything with it, it the the, it the stops. audio yeah, yeah, shuts yeah. off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Are you kidding you me?" To, like keep I recording was one it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Minute in. Yeah. And I was sounding really funny, cracking my own stuff up. And now oh. I gotta do that again. But I have. It's gonna be way more unnatural the second time. I know. And then you're gonna try and do the same jokes, and it's gonna be like you can tell it's a bit. I know. I know. Believe me. So we're gonna get into some, some to some sponsors, and then I think. Since would, we're live now, yeah. we're going to be more current. I know if you've listened, if you dared to listen to our first they episodes. They did. They're, they're they, daring they went people. They're a couple awesome. of them. They're they awesome. They skipped through. Um, we had to stay just kind of, you know, weird topics because uh, we well, couldn't we really be current. Yeah. Uh, so I think now we are going to be, we'll talk about stuff that's going on and we're not going to be a news show. We're not going to be a pop show, but no, like, we'll be, talk about stuff that people are talking about. You'll hear everything from us. We want to literally hit in everything. I don't want to just be, we're not just going to be just pop culture or makeup or, fr you know, yeah. we'll talk about news. We'll talk about sex. We'll talk about like stupid shit everything everything on the what side what girls talk about when they get together if there's some hot gossip in our lives we'll talk about yeah. it relationship news biz news <laughs> about glitter um, bomb chick and like yeah. shit my pants and glitter like bomb everything trash bag. yeah um but yeah there's been stuff going on with iran yeah so we have military. to sort of again i am a civilian dum dum and i try and you're so smart though you are oh my gosh you're so pretty and smart too but, no, but um, really though you are very smart on certain things Right, certain things, and I'm that's so, true. I'm, well, I'm smart. What a burn, huh? No, burn. no, 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 no. No, I'm just. No, I'm saying. <laughs> no, I know. Like I am no. very. I have a lot of knowledge on like worldly things when it comes to, like military yes. and what's going on. Yeah, and like I know nothing about pop culture or any right. of that stuff. So sometimes when you guys talk about it, I feel really stupid because you guys are like, "Do you know A, B, and C?" And I'm like, "No." We all a, have B, our and C niches. is the best band of all time. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you know what yeah I mean. yeah but so we all this have is gonna be perfect because you know i'm gonna this is gonna be me asking you questions because i i don't like to uh be an alarmist i don't like to be freaked out sure so i kind oh. of just go oh, all right okay um i'm gonna see how things shake out and not like freak out about things right yeah. so I'll, does it also mean that you don't like to read up on things and, no i oh, i okay. do but there's so many as you know and as we talk about on drinking bros and ross patterson revolution it's hard to f find the right answer with every news outlet and stuff and then i'll drive myself crazy with that sure. i don't have just one i don't go to cnn i didn't go to you know fox i don't go you know so uh I, I have a like New York Times, uh, Fox sort of blended. Yeah, uh, I say I try to stuff. listen to both. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but with this, uh, it's been a lot of alarmist stuff. So I kind of wait mm -hmm. and take a take a breath, take a step back, and ask you guys questions. And that's what I said on Ross Patterson when we started talking about it. Is I was like, I think we should pump the brakes on this for a second and get our military friends um take on it mm -hmm. because you guys clearly know way more about the ins and outs of all of this mm -hmm. than rose mcgowan or oh, me 
or do you know what I mean? Sure. So well, I'm not saying it's not. Good. I just it's like good to, to have be, an opinion on things, but yeah, we'll get into sure. that a little bit more. Because so, I want to ask you about that. So we'll get into that um, after the sponsors. Our chief sponsor, as well as every show on the network, is oh yeah, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Um, love me some ghost bed. When are, we are going to need to. So I you love said everything you promised, about so far. You promised a ghost bed to one of your family members. Sorry, ghost bed. In love. She's just giving them away. No, I just said that I, I highly recommended it to them. Yeah. And just it like I said the best before. Of all those. Yeah. And there are a bunch and it seems like they're all the same. They are not. Uh, I think this we're we're live now on the 14th. Uh-huh. And I think those so those 25 percent off deals are done. Yeah, but there's only always I think have there's something. only one day left, which sucks. Yeah. Which yeah, for right now. So, but they always have something. They always have some kind of deal going off the hundred off the do- the bundle. Oh yeah, they have great hundred two hundred off bundles. Um, up to that, two free pillows. Which you said their pillows are rad. They're amazing and they're cooling. You always have a cool side of the pillow. If I'm, that doesn't sound amazing yeah. to you, I don't know who I. Turn it off. Turn off the podcast right now. So you know what's funny about me is that I um never really write reviews unless a place is super terrible or super amazing okay right? um and i really have to be really motivated to write the review yeah, however yeah. i am <laughs> incessant on reading the reviews reading the reviews and these have some of the most amazing reviews and you know the drinking bros drinking broettes fans you guys are i love it very honest very oh, yes. forthcoming you don't beat around the bush you're not sugarcoating shit if you like it you like it if you don't you don't yeah and so all these listeners are literally saying hey believe me believe the hype this bed's amazing it they're is. not gonna lie to you no so it's why they're the chief sponsor it's why they've been our sponsor for this long mm-hmm. is because it's the you know these sponsors kind of come and go as we get feedback of you know hey this product wasn't that good or the customer service wasn't good or hey man i didn't da 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 so we'll kind of get cycle through other sponsors depending on the feedback of the listeners right sure with this one uh, never have gotten, hey, bro, my ghost bed didn't come. Hey, they were rude to me. Hey, blah, blah, blah. This happened. Like, it you is always ass. just good. Yeah. And so it's easy to tell you guys to get it. Oh, um, absolutely. I have one. You're going to have one. Where do you need it? In a guest room? Yeah. You're going to be sleeping in there constantly. So I know. I'll be like, hey, babe. Up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babe, I'll be in the guest, hey, ghost I'm bed. Hey, you tonight. Guest bed, ghost bed. Just kidding. I'm just going to sleep with the ghost bed. Sorry. But I'm you know, sorry. I just fell asleep I know, in there. Sorry. Uh, they do a great military discount, first yes. responder, government discount, referral discount, 15% off. Huge supporters of military and first responders. And we like that. I know. We like We appreciate that. it. I'm not one to really, uh, I'm personally not one to ask for military discounts unless something's like super expensive then i'll be like we can hey. touch on that a little bit we will too. we definitely <laughs> that is something i totally want to talk to you about yeah you definitely but have I, it on when, here but when they post it like this mm-hmm. i think it's awesome yeah and i and i appreciate it. i'm kind of like oh my god yeah i'll definitely take advantage of it because some companies do hide it they won't you know what i mean they won't advertise it oh unless you ask them yeah, and email yeah, yeah, them yeah. and say hey do you guys do something for mm-hmm. military and they're like no. oh yeah it's in like this super small writing these guys are like hey oh, weird you guys rock we love you Here's a discount. Nice. And, and by I the way, that. and then, yeah, and here's some like awesome other, other great perks. deals yeah. for everyone else. Yeah. So ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Drinking bros. Hell yeah. Get your discounts. I promise you every time you go to the landing page, there will be some kind of discount there. Not sure what it is right now. Oh, look at that flash sale. Oh yeah. They tell me everything. 25% of my cart. I know. You want to shop with us? No. Sorry guys. I'm working right now. <laughs> She's waiting to get. <laughs> She's waiting for Ghost Bed to deal with all her drama. She's pulled you into Ghost Bed. No. Um, and you have the next one. What are we? Felix yeah. Gray so Glasses. Felix Gray com. Glasses. So you're going to Felix Gray Glasses dot com forward slash drinking bros. I wore them all day yesterday. So Here cute. Are these cute black ones. So I will say this. I wear I've always wanted glasses. Oh my gosh. Me Isn't too. that crazy? For some reason, I have perfect vision. I wanted um, braces and glasses for a second. You wanted braces? I know. When I was like really Who young. Who are I, you? I don't know. It like made my lips look like. When Bigger? I was, like way younger. I was like, oh, I wish I would like have braces. My parents I'm a hated me so much. They gave me braces my senior year of high school and my freshman year of college. Terrace. That's horrible. They're like, have fun. You're trying to give a blowjob with those to a oh dude. Oh my gosh. Why that late? <laughs> It because our dentist gave us like our ortho gave us a deal basically like he was a really good family friend. He's we like met, if you wait until you're hot, no, 
He yeah. knew my little sister needed them, okay. right? So he was like, hey, if you, oh. if you get Abby's, you can get Tiffany's for like basically free. And they were like, sure, let's do it. And I was like, what? Were you hating it? Yeah, and then my teeth, and then they had to get taken off before I even went into the military, like early, right? Oh. So my teeth went back to normal. So it's like I never had braces. Oh, which kind of seems like you did. Super great. But um, so I've always wanted to wear glasses, oh, even yeah. though I have perfect vision. Um, the clear glasses industry, though, is huge. It is huge. For that very reason. Yeah. Girls like want that look, something but, to change it up. Exactly. But now there's a reason to, though. Yes. Because with electronics nowadays. You could say they're blue lights. We're always on our computers, mm-hmm. always on our phone. I'm actually kind of embarrassed the amount that I'm always on some type of device. No, me too. A little bit, right? But it's it. kind of just part of who we are nowadays. Life? Yeah. If you want to save your eyes, because I can only imagine with them doing the studies now with us looking at electronics and how it's going to really affect our eyes negative- negatively, right? Yeah. Over time, mm-hmm. um, you're going to need blue lens glasses. Yes. And so these bad boys I love. Yes. But I also wear them too, like not just when I'm looking at electronics, when I want to look cute. Yes. Or when I maybe like kind of look like shit for the day, and uh, so you guys, if you go <laughs> distract on to, from my face, yeah, exactly. Which is so sad for people that actually have to wear them. They're like, oh, you wear them to distract from your face. Thank you. Thanks so much. But anyways, everyone knows that girls wear fake glasses all the time. Yeah. But I will say this: if you go on to Amazon, which I've done in the past before, to look for clear glen- clear lens glasses, they will have blue light blocking ones but you can tell they have like a yellow tint tint to them or a blue tint or the reflection is really high on them so these actually are they look exactly they look clear i'll tell you too even though the amazon ones of course are gonna be cheaper you pay for what you get right yeah all my amazon ones have scratches yes. all over the lens and i can't stand that and i wore these all day yesterday yep. and i stored them the way i do with my other ones and they did not get scratched and i'm yeah. like thank god and the god. case is really sweet and, and the case like, is really sweet yeah so and they're really good guys we hung out with them at podcast upfronts in new york they have a cool warehouse out there where they're doing everything by themselves entrepreneur type they're very shark tank i like them oh there you go yeah, yeah. they all they all wear the glasses they're awesome so if you want to show them support and show them that you came from us just go to felix glasses.com forward slash drinking bros and get yourself some awesome blue light ga- glasses save your save your eyeballs folks save your eyeballs um they're not cheap but they are, I think, for my money, best in the game. So, so you pay for what you get, though. Yeah, and you will, you'll use them. Like, and they're, they really, really do help. Headaches, stuff like this, if you guys have to work on computers. But anyways. When it comes to taking care of my body, I kind of don't mind putting a little bit more money into it. Yeah. To, like, keep it from just deteriorating. Falling apart. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> Quicker than it's going yeah, to anyways. Really going yeah, going to. So, well, so I was, talk before about you it. came in here today, <laughs> I was now, yeah. watching the news mm-hmm. and Trump just spoke um, on, so Iran decided to uh, try to hit us with some missiles last night Yes, at a few Iraqi bases that, of course, our American military are at. Yeah. And, uh, you know, everyone was saying it was supposed to be like a show of power that mm-hmm. Iran was like, hey, listen, bitches, we're going to fuck you up. Like, yeah. hey, look at us flexing because they, they promised that after they killed Soleimani, which they, is one of the, you know, top military yeah. generals to the Quds Force My in Iran. My only question was like, do they when I was hearing about all of that, I'm like, do they really have the uh, the power, military power, guns? whatever to do the things that they say they're gonna do and you can answer that i guess some of it is like i'm not super intelligent so one thing i would say too is if you want to get a legit good lowdown on what's going on from an expert watch the drinking bros yeah the um, podcast with the terrorist whisperer because he's a former iraqi intelligence officer so he knows so many messages about that oh i know and that's good so i'm not him so i can give what like i kind of know yeah yeah when it comes to like planes and transporting and stuff like that no not really that's a lot but when we think about it though and their nuclear program that's kind of where it gets a little scary do they have a nuclear program? yeah i mean obama was trying to shut it down i mean mm. obama was the one who's like and in his administration during his time was like hey we won't really worry about like oh you're gonna promise not to work on nukes anymore cool and then they still did okay so they kind of just crossed all the red tape with that work they had we had an agreement like a treaty with them and obama was like yeah sure keep doing your thing we'll give you money 
and wasn't really checking on it. And then Trump came into administration and said, no, fuck you. No more with this nuclear mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. It's at, off the table. Yeah. We're not funding you and giving you any more money. Right. Um, for things. So obviously they attacked a couple of the Iraqi bases with our U.S. soldiers on them the other night. And there was no casualties. Okay. Um, which is good. Yeah. Right. We don't want that at all. Yeah. No one was uh, killed. Um, I think there was like a military aircraft hangar that was like hit, but there was minimal damage done. And basically Trump was saying that he's going to get NATO involved, um, more involved. And basically if you're going to keep this up, you're going to feel our wrath. Yeah. Which of course is how it should be. Is that world war three though? Oh my God. Right. So everyone's talking about it. Yes. So this is what this is the like thing that I have to just be like, OK, <sighs> calm down. Here's all here. I'll hear uh, from the people that actually know. Yeah. Um, everyone thinks that what he did, because before. So Soleimani was a target before in other administrations, mm -hmm. right? Under Bush, you know, Clinton, even with Obama and a lot of different news. Liberal, I will say stations were talking about like, oh, my God, Trump completely fucked up. Like, he knew he shouldn't have done that. There was a reason why he, he wasn't taken out before, because if we did take him out, it would have started war. Okay. Right? But the problem is, is Trump was sitting there and going, I'm going to prevent another Benghazi from happening. Yeah. So Benghazi happened in 2012. Yeah. Right? September 11th, 2012. Soleimani was completely in charge of that. Right. So Soleimani- but was it in reaction to something? Benghazi? In, well, so Soleimani was responsible. So first of all, here's what I hate. Anyone who's defending him, I'm kind of like, do you even understand like who this guy is? Who's defending him? Right. Oh, liberals. Yeah, liberals. Sorry. And so Soleimani had his guys build, you know, IEDs along the whole highways in Iraq, claiming, you know, hundreds of thousands of lives of, you know, U.S. soldiers. And on top of that, um, in a former Iranian intel talked about Soleimani and his direct involvement in planning, directing, and financing the Benghazi hits, right? Um, and so Trump was basically like, I don't want to go through that again. And what they know is not stuff that we're going to know, not stuff that we even need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's top secret level. Yeah. Why would they tell us these things? So a lot of times this is where we had to put trust, in, in my mind, to the administration going, I think they made the best move, right? Yeah. Because how many other things was Iran funding and directing maybe hits in the united states that were happening yes you know what i mean yes like this guy was in charge everyone that's chanting that's um you know when they saw his funeral and everyone that was chanting death to america were terrorists mm -hmm. so you know what i mean well they were saying too that it's not just like random people they're like oh gosh we lost a leader it was people that were really into all of the terrorist things that he was doing but yeah i'm gonna say something that some people might not agree with and that's fine. I work I in my line of duty where I work. I work interrogations. Mm -hmm. I've worked there for four years. I learned many different types of exploitation. One of them's propaganda, right? Visual, oral, or written mm -hmm. ways to go ahead and kind of persuade a certain body of people to believe what you want them to believe by literally focusing on like certain topics and that's it and getting them to believe that. And unfortunately, I feel like that's the news, right? Yeah. I don't care what news station you listen to. It's Fox, CNN, MSNBC, whatever it might be. You're going to only get a certain side yes. of the story every yes. single time. Yes. And people kind of purposely do that because they want you to believe only what they are saying, mm -hmm. right? And they want it. And it's that's kind of propaganda when yeah. you think about it at the end of the day. So it really depends. I think it's good to like listen to different resources and stuff out there. But there was another new source, a smaller one that uh, they have a lot of people that are actually in country. And they were saying, hey, I understand that a lot of different news channels are showing all these people mourning his death, mm -hmm. Soleimani's death. But there is a huge section of people chanting, chanting and happy yeah. because they were under duress and torment yeah. from him for so long. But people, again, sure. you know, only certain networks mm -hmm. are showing whatever they want. Mm hmm. Um, so when it comes to World War Three, I think people need to pump their brakes a little bit. Okay. Um, however, you just don't know. Like, no one can sit there and pre predict. Yeah. We don't know what their moves are going to be. We have a great intelligence, so I'm sure the higher-ups know, yeah. possibly. Um, but we don't know what the retaliation and everything's going to happen. Of course, we're always going to be prepared, which we are, which is amazing. Because, um, we, you know, I we do have the best damn military in the world. Yeah. Um, but I think... With just social media nowadays and all these memes, people just love blowing stuff up and having fun with it. And some people like take it seriously and some people joke around yeah. with it, you know? Yeah. 
And one thing that I've noticed, and I was going to ask you about this, is we have a lot of um, celebrities. Yes. Right? Who really like to be very vocal, Mm -hmm. very, very vocal on their feelings about these things. Now, Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with freedom of speech. Sure. We all tweet. We all make posts just like i'm talking about my feelings right now we all have them and not everyone's going to agree but i'm curious your take on very big people celebrities who have huge influence on people Mm -hmm. making some pretty what could be outrageous comments inflammatory comments or just pushing their ideals on other people so i've always so i've always said as far as uh actors singers basketball players football players whatever it may be um people that have this platform for doing one thing right Uh acting singing um once they have the platform all of a sudden they're politicians Mm -hmm. also Mm -hmm. yeah so i think that they lose touch and they lose touch with reality in thinking that they now are um in some way equipped to talk to people about political things Mm -hmm. right where are you a political science major like with us i'm like i don't really know this is how i feel and i'm asking questions and i'm like trying to figure stuff out and i sometimes believe this and sometimes believe that or whatever but these people and i i don't have a platform like them right Mm -hmm. but it's a really dangerous thing i think that's happening and i think a lot of people would agree me agree with me but a dangerous thing where these people are told that with their platform um they should do bigger things or people are giving them that type of platform right okay yeah um because you're an actor like if you want to show me that you were a political science major or that you were in politics or that you ran for something or whatever, I'm like, okay, they also, yeah. I'm going to listen to what they say about whatever. But if you are just a super rich actor, singer, uh, sportsman yeah. or woman, um, I think it's a little bit dangerous to speak on things as if they're facts. Do you think it hurts their following? Um, or do you think it, it depends. It? If they're against Trump, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't hurt them. If they are for Trump, it absolutely will. So that's the other thing that's like, okay, well, I guess only people that are against Trump have a platform. Yeah. It's, a, it's a little bit crazy, but basically, um, and it's like the Golden Globes. Like, wh- why am I listening to you? Dude. You have an award. You won for a movie that you acted in. And now I'm also listening to your thoughts about abortion. Yeah. And that's, fine but um time and place read yeah. the room and it's so silly and tone deaf it's i'm so, I'm so annoyed by that i'll be honest like i remember watching award shows and actors that i thought i respect it in ways right that i thought were professional actors good people actors you want to put it right? on your instagram go ahead sure but who like came up and got an award and then they make an attack I, think, I don't care who it is yeah you know what i mean um even though they might make it on hillary Clinton, i might laugh at the same time I'm like but really did you have to say that right then and there even if i don't like the individual whatever right uh it to me i'm just kind of like was it really necessary like did you have to say that you couldn't just thank like a bajillion people like you should like because they don't have any insider information you guys it's like, just, it's they opinion. are getting the same news mm-hmm. the same things that you're getting they just yeah. have a louder voice to what tell you the news you can already find out mm-hmm. um and i'm not saying it's like wrong so free obviously there's freedom of speech and you know there's definitely probably gonna be people out there who was like well you know they can do what they want and say what they want and platforms that they want because they earned it and it's like yeah that's great cool i respect that however like it can be dangerous, though. Look, yeah, everyone like, has freedom really? of speech, right? But so do fucking the KKK. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, is that dangerous? Hate speech? Is it dangerous freedom of speech? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, I don't know. I'm not super into censorship or anything like this. I think Alex Jones should be able to talk about whatever he wants. And mm-hmm. we should and they should. But I think that as a citizen that doesn't have a platform, um, I would love for us as a whole to just be a little bit more discerning as far as like what we 
what we let people be experts on right yeah in, no, in our in our own mind and hearts right well, like so it's up to you guys to be like and not you people that listen to this podcast you're are a little general, bit like they're all, not into rose like the McGowan. Whole population just yeah. like why just like rose mcgowan look she actually is not really doing anything acting wise anymore and is mainly a polit like into politics right She's not into politics, I feel but like she every, is. I feel like all the charm girls now, like Alyssa Milano. Is so they are too, not like, doing the acting happened? stuff yeah. anymore. They've completely shifted. Although, again, they like, shift because they suck at acting or like their career went down and then they had to like find something else to. And you're out of touch. You're rich clout. as shit. You do not hang out with real people in this world. You mm -hmm. are up in the hills like John Legend, Christy, Chrissy Teigen, who I hate. Um up in the hills in, the, in their fucking yeah. mansion uh behind a, a wall yeah and with like four nannies a chef a you know pers two personal assistants each drivers they're out of touch with that's not real they're, all they're doing is sitting in in a room mm -hmm. in their mansion watching the same news that you guys are watching like yeah. they're not any better any worse if anything they're out of touch mm -hmm. they're not in the fucking you know they're not protesting in a real way they're like giving money good for you you should do well when it comes to the population and how most of us live they they, they do not live no like idea us. how things that they are against affect real people in the real world yeah. with real jobs and real struggles mm -hmm. right so like that's the the spectrum you have to think about whereas like new york and la they think about themselves because you're surrounded by People that are either super rich or working all the time yeah. or living in fucking penthouses or even apartments that are 10,000 a month. Like you, you are surrounded by this different world, right? Mm -hmm. And these two places, California and New York, do not ever think about the rest of the nation, right? The middle, the Kansas City, the, you know, Arizona, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Iowa. They don't even North realize Dakota. that that exists. Yeah. They're just like, look. If they can't get on board, you know, it's like they don't even understand that policies that they're talking about or certain things that are going to trickle down really affect these people's day to day being able to buy food for their family or go to work. Like they don't, they just don't see that. I think it was Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Saying? I think he said it perfectly. Legend. Uh, at the very end, he said, hey, when you come up for your award tonight, literally just Thank who you have Make to thank. Little award. Thank whatever God you believe in. Don't and your go agent. A, and your agent, whatever. Don't go on a political rant. Shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about Say your political views. Say thank you. Views. Walk down to your seat. And that's the end of it. And I was like, oh my God, I love you. People like, were like freaking out. But I was like, yes. Like I, I mean, got all these texts that were like so uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, brutal. And I was like, yeah. And true. And true. And no one says it to their faces. And I'm so glad someone could. Ugh, and so the best good. part the whole time, he was giving this whole speech and making this jokes and jabs. You know, at the very beginning, he was like, hey, life's short. We only have one life. You don't get a sequel. We're all going to die one day. Like, let's just have fun. Like, I'm going to poke fun at your expense. Like, he warned them. Don't get a, we don't get a sequel in that room was the best, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're all doing sequels and Marvel and remakes and reboots. I like, thought one he thing he said we don't really get a funny, reboot. Yeah. Is that he was like, we lost touch. He's like with creativity or like we're coming up with shit. Like we keep remaking movies. And in my head, I'm like, you are like everything I see, like even my childhood favorites. I'm like, oh, no. Well, you know, Aladdin I mean, and Lion King. And I'm like, why? Are you, at the I, you will never be able to make the same no. Like, even something better than the first one. No. You know, like, Will Smith's cool, you're a genie, but no, thing, no one would ever replace the cartoon Robin Williams one. No. Ever. So, In our minds, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, no, I just thought it was funny that he was very honest with them about that, and oh, was I was just best. like, good for you, man. And that blew up all over the internet as well. But the problem with that, with cancel culture, is you have to be as rich and as autonomous as he is. Mm-hmm. To be able to say those things. So sure. if you need those people for your livelihood, you can't, you can't say that, right? He has one show on Netflix, but by the way, he doesn't even give a fuck. Yeah. So he is so fucking rich. It's insane. Really? Right? Him and Chappelle, they're rich as shit and they answer to nobody. Netflix, if Netflix stops putting them on, fine. 
they're still fine and they also will just do stand up somewhere mm-hmm. and be okay be they've fine. made it to this He's place set. okay anyone under that even you know like alex jones milo they're all canceled you cannot find them anywhere except for on their website which look i don't agree or disagree it's just crazy mm-hmm. right that you can you, you know the Louis C. K. And the, the games well, you, you can play? cancel people you can cancel people yeah we literally in hollywood the the way the things are right now the the fact that we can cancel people and just take everything away from them mm-hmm. because of something that somebody else said or whatever or that he that they did look harvey weinstein canceled we should cancel him right mm-hmm. but there are other people that maybe shouldn't be right and and but the other thing is the only way that you can talk about the things that you want to talk about is a if you have a podcast by the way yeah um we answer to advertisers and you guys and advertisers either like it or they don't and you can move on and we can get another one another yeah so that's what we're dealing with but if i had to be on a network i'd have to answer to them if i had to be in a movie you have to answer to them you know what i mean like tape the what there's a lot of red tape yeah well there's a lot of people and most of them are liberal so you really do need to, you have to in play order to be in to there survive. yeah wow so anyone else that was gonna host that couldn't say that right if yeah he, if they were in it um but he is at a level which is the only level that you can talk like that him and Chappelle, basically right now think of someone else that you think is set and like kind of made their brand that way anyways yeah i don't know that whole world that's very diff- and i only hear it really from social media yeah you know what i mean yeah and i'll hear it from like meme pages or i think evan posted something about ricky gervais and he said incredible and i didn't know if it was sarcasm or what so i youtube i it. think incredible no, it yeah. Was, but yeah, I, yeah well i didn't know at the time so yeah. i youtubed it and then i was like this is incredible mm-hmm. and so that's sometimes how i get some information right yeah like a meme page i'm like cool like, what does this mean and may, then you I like mean, research yeah yeah, yeah. So I think one of the, even the first times I heard about like a possible World War Three draft thing of Soleimani, like right when it happened, is through a meme. Oh, is that no. crazy? <laughs> yeah. And then I like, and then I look it up and go, oh, yeah, yeah, look, yeah. and I do more like research. But mm-hmm. sometimes, I mean, I will tell you right now, these meme pages, especially some of the ones that my military buddies are in charge of, like yeah. Pop Smoke Official, yeah, um, help my buddy Dan Sharp, like he's on it. And he's got buddies who are still in the military, too. Like, a ton of Marines are still in because he's a prime Marine. And so he'll have information before, like, even sometimes I'm sure the news nice. will have it. Like, mm-hmm. he even posted, I think, the other day, um, the other night. I don't know if this is for sure or not. I wasn't able to really verify it, but it showed kind of like a little firefight type of thing or, mm-hmm. like, missiles being shot. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that was, like, a Marine at one of the Iraqi bases, like, sending him stuff of, like, this is going on right now, bro. Yeah, I did see that, and, and Jared like, sent me that too. Oh so, shit! Yeah. yeah, but um, you're saying there was no casualties. As of no, that's what Trump said. Trump said there's as okay. of right now there's no casualties, and, and that was that, on your way over here. That was okay. when I literally just watched it hours before this or an hour before this. And two, I know that even the news last night was saying, "Hey, so far there's no casualties," but I'm sure that if there is an American life taken by a point, Trump's going to be like, "Well, it's on. It's on." Like Donkey Kong. As um, it kind of should be right i yeah i agree so they've been talking about this people been joking about the draft and i've been seeing a lot of tiktoks made about it right i've been seeing like guys and girls this alike uh-huh. whether like people are saying they want to like hey i'm ready for the draft like because they played all these video games like call of duty their whole life <laughs> so they're funny. like ready for it that's funny or you have like guys saying like dressing up as girls Okay. Because they don't want to get they drafted. They don't want to get drafted. Because they're a guy. And then you That's have funny. girls either saying that they're ready and they put on like a cosplay military costume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Or you have other girls being like, I'm an independent woman. And then they hear that there's a draft. Right. Oh, that one's a funny one. And I then think. they like, and, oh, like, and then they're great at cooking housewife. and cleaning. Yeah. Housewife. Yeah. <laughs> so like I ended up making just like a comment about it, about yeah. the draft stuff. And this is so first of all, we'll talk about the draft kind of briefly. Okay, please. Can, just am that, I going to be drafted? No, I'm joking. Right. <laughs> so for, for the sure draft to actually be employed is pretty I'm unlikely. Motion, motion right? sickness. Clean. Like our, um, 
right now where we're sitting with a all voluntary force we're at 1.2 million and that's just active duty troops that does not count guard does not count reserve and that's probably even doubling right that number so right. and those people some of them are inactive and they are out but you still have to serve their ears so they can be activated whatever mm -hmm. so we have there's a lot of people okay like we're good we're good the last time the draft has ever been used was 1973 that's what i thought yeah and they've actually been talking about for a while of kind of getting rid of it and the reason why is because what, i want to make sure i get this number right so they've been talking about getting rid of the selective service because they spend 24 million a year to maintain their system and we haven't used oh. it since 73 Right? Yeah. So, so maintain that we have enough people in the database and everyone. The maintain the gets, database, paying yeah. the people who are like part of it. Yeah. Like, because when, it, when a boy turns, you know, 18, mm -hmm. he has to register. To be in the system. Yeah. And that's the thing, too, is like all these men, like, so if you do not register for the selective service, right, as a male in the United States being 18, um, there's consequences for it. So to be drafted, they draft ages 18 through 25. And if you were not to register and it's to be found out, I think you don't get the rights to vote. You don't get your, you can't get your driver's license. Um, you don't get any type of financial aid. Mm -hmm. You can be imprisoned. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like anything. So it's, that's a big, you know, consequence for not yeah. doing it. And, um, so here's the thing when it comes to the draft, people are like joking about it and really happening. Like, listen, the likelihood of that really happening is super, super rare. Yeah. But then the whole female thing got brought up, right? Yeah. And they even brought up a thing in Congress in 2016. So in 2016, I believe it was official almost across all the military branches that females were now going to be allowed in all combat jobs. So in the military, there was specialized jobs like Navy SEALs, Special Forces. In the Air Force, it was like PJ, Combat Controller, like all these frontline combat jobs that they did not have women in. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, it was for a good reason yeah right um because if don't fix unless it's broke type of thing um they noticed that these were hard jobs that barely males could get into and they need the elite of the elite and in this types of environment it might be hard to kind of throw a female in there and if we do open up to females how many will actually make it type of thing is the juice will be worth the squeeze all these things right mm -hmm. so as we developed over the years and you know they realized that you know women are capable some definitely not all i would say very few are mm -hmm. capable of doing these things i decided to open it up to them but i also in my humble opinion i think that it was like a political move for some people because right. up there in congress they wanted to make these moves and say hey look what i did and i think mm -hmm. some military leaders also want to be like put it on their resume and look good yeah i sometimes don't think that they really thought things through mm -hmm. because to me i think to myself like you know, they talked about, well, before we should introduce women into these combat roles, maybe we should see how women do in, like, all male jobs that are very physical and active like that. Like, let's put females into the NFL first to see, right? Yeah. Well, to see. My God. Right? But here's my thing. Like, why? <laughs> be in the NFL. Right? But for me, I'm like, tr do it with the NFL first and see how that works. Okay? It's a tough job. Right. It's a really tough job. Like, it's very physically demanding. Like, right. But it's a game in my, it's a game. Yeah. It's literally a game. Yeah. To me, war is not a game. Yeah. You, that's not a time to test out if it, the female dynamic will work mm -hmm. in, a, in a wartime scenario. Yeah. Because now you're playing with people's lives. And that's my take on it. And I have, I might have a different opinion than some of you guys. And I'll tell you right now that my opinion six years ago was completely different. Right. I was like, nope, women should do everything. Women, women should do everything. everything. Like Men we got this. Yeah, this yeah. This. Yeah. The more time I spent in the military, the more time I spent with elite forces, the more times that I worked and went through courses and trained with special forces and was in courses with Navy SEALs and even our special operations guys, I saw a very different dynamic I saw it firsthand how adding just a female into a course who was one of the who was kind of acting like one of the guys like me threw off a lot of things. And I saw that. And to me, I was just kind of like, is it really is it is it really worth the squeeze? The but you, you know, know, my feeling on it is that we do ourselves a disservice and take away from what we really can do trying to do that kind of stuff. Sure. Like we're not going to. Like, you know, we're not going to be good at basketball. 
We're not going to be the best at. No, no, no. We're there are certain females who are great at. Absolutely, I'm not, but I'm we're saying, saying general as a whole. General as a whole, and I think that if we focus more on the things that we can do, which is basically run the world. Yeah. Well, so that instead of trying to lift as much as a man, do you know what I'm saying? Like we and can some girls run. Can. They can. But, I, yeah. but it takes a lot, a lot of fucking work, genetics and oh, yeah. determination a lot more and than it does for a guy else a lot steroids. more a lot more for a guy to do the exact same thing so i'm not saying that that we can't yeah i'm saying it takes so much more effort mm -hmm. for us to do the same exact thing whereas there in are other things aspects. in certain yes. aspects but there are other things that we can do so much better than them and we're so, not doing it because we are trying to be the same and we are not the same for me if we want to go to the same standards in the military across the board which they're starting to go to i think the, the why don't we do the same standards in the olympics what do you mean why don't males and females compete against each other yeah exactly but you know yes. and I'm, I'm, i in my mind i think that females and males in the military should have same standards when it comes to like yes. physical and stuff like that yeah i think that that i think that the military should be elite force like that yes. i think only the best of the best I don't want to have like fat turds in there who, you know, or like girls, guys or girls, girls. Yeah. Either or guys or girls who can literally walk a mile and a half and still pass, you know, and like get paid the same as guys who have to, you know, train harder. And there like, are girls that can do it. There I'm are not tons saying of girls. that there yeah. isn't. Well, here's, I'm not. Here's my. But that's the kind of feminist I am is that I wish that we all would play to our strengths and let them play to theirs and we can together make everything awesome and on top of it our strength is like being in fucking charge by the way here's yeah so. here's my perspective on things i don't think particularly that females really needed to be added into like these jobs with like navy seals mainly like uh seals and special forces because their program and everything they're doing worked perfectly fine like pjt like could a girl in the Air Force be a PJ in combat controller? Yeah, I think so all day long. Yeah. Will, like, because to me, they don't there do... There are jobs in the military probably that women are better at, correct? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm saying they could still do that because it's not like these guys go out in, like, 12-man yeah. teams and yeah. go and, like, engage with, um, like, Afghan, like... Mm -hmm special forces and stuff like that, that's a very different world. And we have to realize too that um, those cultures have very little respect for women, right? Um, and stuff, and it's gonna be really hard for them to be part of those yes. groups. And that's a very different dynamic, yes. a 12 man team than it is being, PJs don't get mad at me, but kind of like a combat nurse, mm -hmm. right? Where like great women are amazing at, you know, trauma and handling stress and handling stress, being in charge, calm under pressure, and like medical skills and stuff like that. Right. And like, yeah, don't get me wrong. They do cool things too, like jump out of planes and, you know, rope in and all this other stuff. But girls can do that too. Like it's not sure you had to be somewhat physical. You had to be physically fit and you had to be a good swimmer. But to me, like those for me, those jobs, I'm like, whatever. Mm -hmm. But what we should have done, in my mind, instead of putting females in special forces and SEALs, is we should have started their own team of females, mm -hmm. right? And I know that there's, I know they have, like, FET teams, which are female engagement teams in the Marines. I know they have, like, CST teams. And what would teams. that benefit, though? Like I'll show culture assessment, like, survival teams, I think, stuff like that. Okay, so when you think about it, there are certain things like special forces them do where they're like gathering intel and they're like infiltrating certain places and like trying to meet certain people and all this other stuff. Military guys tend to sometimes really stick out like sore thumbs, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not the sometimes the best at it. Yeah. And just like we said that, you know, we're very, as a female species, we're very, very intelligent. So we can learn other languages really easily. We're natural born interrogators. We yep. really are. Like, we're really good at that. We're very, very good at blending in. We can change our appearance super easily in so many different ways. Um, I do it every day. Right? So do I. <laughs> it, it's one of those things we're really good at. And the thing is, we're not as intimidating, you know, yeah. at all. You're going to, you can flirt. You can be sweet. You can be nice, like guys or girls. You can be a friend of chick. 
and she won't think anything wrong with it and she won't you know what i mean or you can talk to a guy and maybe he thinks you're hitting on him Mm -hmm. whereas a guy right they're a little bit more cautious maybe they come off with the wrong vibe maybe they piss off some dudes some girl might think they're hitting on them Mm -hmm. like they want nothing to do with them right girls are very good at those things so you know with some of this stuff going on we can get information like that and also too when they go into these villages they're obviously you know military men aren't really going to talk to a lot of the females in some of these cultures because that's frowned upon Mm -hmm. because they're not allowed to talk to other men yeah so that's where you need females Mm -hmm. in there too and i know there's teams out there like that but why don't we just revamp these and build them up and really start and i'm sure there are in three letter agencies and everything else but i'm saying like why if we want females in these jobs why don't we just kind of take what they did their, not make it as ground strength. pounder ish where yeah. we're like having to throw like mm-hmm. hundreds of pounds on their back and like it's counterproductive to you know me I mean? where it's like let's play to your strengths yes yeah, you should be physically to fit our right strengths. but play to their st- i love all of that because it's all true there's so many things that and i'm sure in the military and exactly what you're saying that women are just better at than men yeah right there are certain things and vice versa and just accepting that and go leaning into that I think would do us a better, you know, service than what we're doing right now. Yeah. But you know what? Not that that's a huge really I can issue right now. at but least yeah. speak from experience. So in my career field, it was like one of the few specialized jobs in the Air Force that they allowed females in, right? And they've been allowing females in my career field for a decent amount of time, a couple of decades. And there's barely any who make it because of the physical standards, right? And like the big thing that always got females to drop out um or fail was like pull-ups because you have to do like a minimum of eight Mm -hmm. to get in and then also right and then also uh the ruck because you know you're you're rucking which just means you have a heavy load at you know basically ruck or backpack on your back and you are moving at a very brisk pace over mountainous terrain or very uneven terrain um and you have to move quickly and fast (sighs) and so like when i went through my training we had nine feet of snow out there and we are wearing big ass snowshoes and i have 120 pounds on my back uh you know and i'm keeping up with the dudes but that's what you have to do yeah. right and so the way that these things can only really work if you do want to add females into it is you have to keep a level playing field you have to keep all the standards intact you have if you want the girl to be respected by the guys you have to keep the same standards um there'll be like especially in these spe- specific jobs where they are a little bit more intense like you have to have to have to keep everything the same if you do not you're doing the females at a service because they're gonna be hated by these guys by the way they're gonna be hated by most anyway because a lot of these guys think yeah you know like they're insecure and they don't want a female like doing better than them or, yeah, or doing yeah. better than them yeah and i'll tell you right now like you know there's always gonna be people giving them excuses like oh well, people push them through and yada 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 and unfortunately within some history of certain things even like think of the ranger schools because i read the whole assessment process there was a lot of things done differently when those females made it that all the guys were like that i never had those opportunities yeah and that wasn't done for me so why was it done for them mm-hmm. and the air force actually took me because i was only the only females um that was in a very similar job compared to all the rest of the you know air force kind of special ops jobs like PJ, CCT, TAC, P, um, and weather, they took me and said, hey, we want you to assess all these training schools, and we want you to write a report for Congress and saying how women, we need to be integrated into this training. And of course, I like talked about facilities and like mean, like clothing and stuff, like how it'd be transferred over for females and what would make it easier for them and their lives easier so that it's not impeding training mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But then also, um, I was like, keep the news away from them. Don't like... Don't try to interview these girls and treat them any differently than any of the rest of the guys. There should not be news agencies mm-hmm. and like reporters saying like, oh, this is the first girl trying yeah, out yeah, for yeah. this. None of that stuff. Keep the standards the exact same. Do not change the standards at all. It's going to ruin A, B, and C, and D. This is throughout history. These are all the you know percentages. And they were like, wow. I'm like, yeah. And it's important to do that. Mm-hmm. And so for me, if they're now allowing all these females into all these combat jobs, then they need to go ahead and put females into the draft now and that's just my personal opinion Mm -hmm. because if they that was the one thing females didn't have was being allowed to be in these combat jobs right being on these front lines going you know being engaging boots on the ground what's what they call it 
So now that females are allowed to do all the same things guys can do, then why cannot, why are females not being drafted too? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And a lot of guys are saying the same thing. Like, right. wait, what the hell is this? Mm -hmm. do, what did they now get to pick and choose what applies to and what doesn't? You know? Yeah. And so I guess Congress and some of these people did the same thing. Like, hey, this might need to be applied to them. However, now they're just talking about getting rid of it. Yeah. But that's just my humble opinion. Mm -hmm. As in, listen, I know it might suck. And not all the ladies are like, hey, I didn't want this. Yeah. Hey, I didn't want to do this job. Like, why do I need to be drafted? Right. Yeah. Type of thing. But this is kind of like how it goes. Like, if we all want the equality and we want to be treated the same, like, you can't just pick and choose what applies to you and what doesn't. It's you get it all or, or you mm -hmm. don't. And mm -hmm. that's just how I feel because that's the only way that the, the whole system works. Yeah. You can't say, oh, no, 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 no. I want the job and I want all the benefits. On but my I, terms, when I want to do yeah, it. Yeah, but I, I don't want to be deployed um, and yeah. be away from my family. Mm -hmm. I have kids and like, mm -hmm. well, well, then don't do the job. Yeah. So that's just kind of where I kind of get into it. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Do you have any? On which part? I mean, I thought I already... Do you think that it should be, like, do you think females should be drafted or no? No. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, I don't, I, that would be a crazy world if that actually happened. World. Yeah. But, um, you know, my thoughts on it my thoughts are, I don't even think, you know, I think it should be an even playing field. Mm -hmm. So I guess with, in terms of what you're saying is if you want it to be even all the way across, yeah. then yes. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying I want so them to. So that's my thing, but I think it will be a good eye opener. I know on a different, completely different, not as important note, but uh, like Whitney Cummings is being sued for saying in her company, she was leaving her company, her uh, office that she like owns and everything like this mm -hmm. and was like said, uh, Merry Christmas to someone. Oh my God. And she's getting sued and for something else as well. And somebody said that she was talking to like, hey- so what happens you want to be equal you want to be in charge of everything whatever this is the other thing that comes with it oh, okay it's like being sued all the time for everything or like do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so if you want one thing and i think that's true exactly what you're saying if you want one part of it yeah you're gonna take have to take all of it and i think that's where us as women kind of have a an interesting time and some people more than others where you want to be independent you want this sure. you want to be the same but biology and reality mm -hmm. will hit you in the face sure. whether you want it to or not right where it's like guys are dressing up at girl as girls and going and doing high school sports mm -hmm. right like that's reality and biology <laughs> hitting you in the fucking face and yeah. being like well wait a minute do you know what I mean? Where mm -hmm. it's like, we do, but, yeah, right? Well, we're all the same except for guys can't compete in our sport. I thought you were all the same. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I know. Yeah. We're in this weird, we're, we're, and it's always we're in a, it's a, a struggle, weird limbo right? right? Now. It is. Of like, oh, I want to be independent, but I want to be married. Or I don't want to be married, but I want to, like, you know, you can still be, be independent and be married, I feel like. For the, Absolutely. Like, but there's, to like, that. Do you yeah, know it's what a mean? balance. It's a balance. It's hard. I and think you have to give some and you have to take some. My theory on why, you know, a lot of women are single right now or having getting married later or getting, you know, having kids later or whatever is that exact thing where we want independence so bad. But when you are thinking about getting into a marriage, yeah. you have to let go of a little of that. You do. You have and to be we're less like, selfish. Because we haven't had it for so long, right? Like, we're just now getting, like, That's why real I, yeah. fucking independence, right? The vote has not even been, like, 100 years. So it's, like, we just now have it. And so we're, like, you know, and we're kind of crushing it. Like, uh, Lenny in of Mice and Men, right? Uh -huh. Like, we have this new independence thing. We're, we're getting, you know more opportunities much more opportunities and we're fucking crushing it yeah. like we're killing the puppy we are um like you know you, women directors there's so many more women directors now now we're pissed that we're not getting awards it's like calm the fuck down mm. hopefully we'll get there you'll get there just keep your you'll head down and keep, keep yeah, fucking keep killing working. it yeah keep even in this company it. are we fucking as you know respected and high up as we should be no but we're going to keep our head down we're yeah. going to do this show hope that you like it if you don't we can regroup right mm -hmm. but i just don't any any little opportunity that we get i hate it's that we just like balance, fucking ruin though. it dude <laughs> i'll be honest it's super hard to balance because you sit there like i've even in my own head 
thought to myself, how do I be amazing at my job and give 100% to that, but then also try to give 100% to my family? And, and like, I want kids, like, yep. and it's hard. And so I, I just want to clear up right now. I'm not saying I think women should be. I'm not saying, like, women need to be drafted. I'm just saying if we're going to keep it. Oh, no. And even, I'm, I'm with it. If we're going to keep it that. even. Why is that not a thing? I w- I'm um, with that for sure. But it's hard. And I actually talked to my dad before about this same thing. And I said, you know, I come home from – I come home from the military and I see all my high school friends married and have like multiple kids and I kind of feel like I'm behind the times. So he goes, Tiffany, I want you to look at your life and realize how completely if different that's what you wanted, them, you would have done. Right? It. He goes, he goes, I'm sure that they look at you and they, my, my friends have, they told me this before, like, oh my gosh, you're so accomplished. You've done so many things. Like my whole life, that's all it's been in my, is my kids. Like we're all on different paths, but I had to realize that like I focused on work and that's what mattered to me. Right. And then once I, you know, met my husband, I realized, hey, I really, it was really hard to do, but I had to sit there and assess and go, do I really want this really cool (laughs) job that I got offered and not really have a family and have a life? And this is like be gone in different countries all the time for the rest of our marriage. Or do I want to take a kind of less exciting job, Mm -hmm. but be at home with my husband a little bit more? Excuse me. I'm you know just joking. I, no, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. No, no, not, not this. But I'm <laughs> no, saying in the military, no, right? No, yeah. And I, I'm thank God for this because this is this was a highlight. Yeah. But I'm saying a less exciting job yeah. in the military and go, okay, it's not as cool, it's not as fun, it's not as high speed. However, like I actually get to spend time with my husband and we can try to have a family yes. now. And it's still sometimes, I'll be honest, super honest, it's still sometimes a hard pill for me to swallow. And I'll sit there and be like, I you know, two years so later, much, yeah. two years later, I'm sitting there in my in my head. I'm like, I don't still don't have a kid to show for this, and I've taken like a kind of shitty job that I, like is super slow and kind of boring, and I could have been doing this really cool job mm-hmm. for the last two years. But then I sit there and go, it's fine. I don't want to live in the past. We're gonna keep pushing forward, and all I can do is make the best with what I'm continuing to do, right? Yeah, and I'll, I mean, we can end on that, but like. uh just women make so many more sacrifices in 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 life like not i f- i feel mm-hmm. because we have to sacrifice things we that we lot. want sacrifice things that we want to take care of other people and that's i guess only if you're like have a kid and have family otherwise you know go for it do what you got to do but if you are going to have kids and you are going to have a family you unfortunately unless you have a house husband which again that's another sacrifice um you mm-hmm. you have to sacrifice a lot of things um you know look at hillary clinton i mean bitch right but she oh kill she her. sacrificed a lot to stand yeah. by to be the wife to be the mom did, yeah. and then it was her time and she just could not fucking land the plane but anyway <laughs> thankfully thank god but right yeah you look at that and you go my god like she was so fucking smart and was really going for this political career and stood by this fucking man had kids da 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 right Mm -hmm. and then it was her time she was gonna she was gonna run then everything that she wanted to do yeah it's it's hard whatever you think of her as at a very base like woman wife mom level that is what hit me with mm-hmm. that whole situation is like oh fuck it's too mm-hmm. late like it's too late you're out of touch you have too much shit in your arsenal now you have too much baggage that people are going to look out you know if you if you had a run before clinton maybe if the, if it had been like oh we're gonna get behind hillary instead of clinton right mm-hmm. things may have been completely different but now it's you know she has too much fucking bullshit yeah it'll never ever in a million years happen yeah well i mean look at their history though when you look for at that, sure but that. that was accumulated yeah. over time but no it's hard it, it's either i know some women think they had to pick one or the other and you know some do and that's fine and other like i know i thought to myself that i think i i think that i maybe think too highly of myself and just, I'm really unrealistic. I'm like, I'll be able to juggle both like really well. I'll give all my, like all my attention to my job. But then when I come home, I'll give all my family like, no, 
<laughs> there's no Maybe realistic way. No, I know there's no realistic way. I just want to convince myself that I would be able to, but I know already as I'm seeing you here, have to, it's this thing I have that to slow things down. It, it's this thing that your brain does so that you actually do have kids. But if you actually knew the reality, you wouldn't. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. But your brain has to tell you, no, like, I know. it's going to be fine. And then also when you have one, your brain makes you forget everything so that you have another one yeah. it's all these bio biological things that happen so that women will have kids um otherwise if we really knew all the truth and what it was going to be like there would be no other generation <laughs> under us uh because my god you hung out with my kids yesterday i love them though rough they were awesome wolf no i'm just joking um, um Jax is kind of repeating everything i said and i was like don't say anything wrong don't yeah say no he was, he, he was cute. he was listening for sure and he was like wait what do you mean by you're like oh sorry um, um i mean <laughs> he was great i'm <laughs> like love a them parrot both. i love them both um well should... we can talk about we can talk about th other things later on because one other thing i wanted to bring up to you but we'll talk about on like the next one or okay. we'll talk about in the future okay so like a little teaser but i really wanted to kind of get your opinion on like um the military spouses thing because i know right. i posted something in my story that was showing like a military spouse felt like she was entitled to like free drinks at a place because she was a spouse right and so like i'm always curious other people's takes on it. i speak i'll speak to just that post is that it felt very um okay like any actor or celebrity that says do you know who i am it's all shitty well i'll tell you this right now this is what it said is this something and this is the other thing i'm not in that community as much so yeah. is that a thing that it's, you well, guys there is a thing they're called they're called dependas is like a slurred term they call them dependas because you're considered Love a it. military dependent of course or they call them dependipotamuses if Love they're it. like you know sure just always stay at home and that's all they do but um this okay so this lady ordered two glasses of wine at a restaurant and mm -hmm. she didn't tip anything at all mm -hmm. but she wrote a note and she wrote a note to her waitress saying i'm a military spouse it should be free next time thank a military spouse and <laughs> fucking bitch and then she posted it like on her snapchat or story or something with over the receipt military spouses deserve free drinks fuck this place oh my god fuck this place we serve our asses off way more than anyone else and <clears throat> so here's what i will say briefly on this Military, being a military spouse is hard. Absolutely. Especially when you're not in the military yourself. So I guess I Absolutely. can. My and husband's a military spouse. More, I'm a military spouse. Yeah. But we're both so in touch with what each other do. We're so very understanding. If you are going to marry a military person, you have to be understanding of that lifestyle and of that job. That's something you should know right before going in. So that's not some, you know, like it's going to be really hard. And I'm not saying it's always something that you have like that you should be willingly be able to accept, but it's something you're going to have to accept for the yeah. purpose of your marriage, right? Yeah. I will say being a military spouse is hard, and you guys do deal with a lot. You guys are incredible. You guys do it all at home when they're gone. You guys take care of everything. You guys, I remember one of the first deployments I had with my husband because I was no normally the one to deploy to my last mm -hmm. relationship. I remember when he deployed, I felt like I kind of was lost for a bit and I finally got down into my own rhythm and I was like really enjoying things and he came home and I kind of felt like he messed everything up Yeah, and it was like starting back from square one. I know these women deal with this all the time and especially when they have kids, like I can't even imagine. Oh and my gosh. Yeah. You guys do deserve all of the You deserve love. You deserve support. And like, yeah, and look, absolutely. anytime someone gives you something for free, you absolutely deserve it. That's all I'm yeah. going to say. But then this Are you entitled to it? I'm not sure. In this instance, I'm kind of like, are you kidding me right now? Like the entitlement is strong and with you. I think you. everyone can uh like agree with that, right? What, no matter what l side of the line you are, that particular note and that particular person way over the line. As a military member, I would never even act like that, number one. I don't feel like in any shape or form that I am entitled to any discount, that I'm entitled to anything free. I don't think I can just throw trash on the ground and be like, I fought for this country. I can litter it if I want to. Because mm -hmm. I've heard people say that before. That is so stupid. I don't think anyone's entitled to those things. I think it is awesome when people recognize it and when people are appreciative of it. One of the most awkward things I was telling you about this before, like I, I feel uncomfortable personally when people say thank me, when they thank me for my service because That's I don't really know what to say back. And ask I ask you, you know, like I'm kind of uncomfortable with it. And, and here's my take on it too. I volunteered to go into the military. No one forced me to go into it. I knew what I was getting into. Right. I knew I'd be away from my family. I knew I'd be deployed. I knew I could possibly lose my, lose my life serving my country. And I'm 
okay with it. Right. That's what everyone, when they raise their right hand, swore to do, right? Mm-hmm. And so I don't just expect to be thanked for it because that's like thanking a nurse to go into her job. Even though I will thank a nurse for like being awesome and taking care of me, she's kind of like, this is what I chose to do. Yeah. You don't have to thank me for choosing to do it. paid for it. You could probably get paid better and taken care of when you get back. Sure. Yeah. The VA could definitely be better. And right. Like but that, you, but it's a job you're doing that you're getting paid for. And absolutely. I understand that. Um, only after getting into this group, Drinking Bros, and hanging out with these guys, did I ever even know that you guys are uncomfortable with that. But mm-hmm. now I see it all the time. Like when sure. people say it to them, they're like, you know what I mean? They mm-hmm. don't even know. And I'm sh- I mean, I'm sure I'll see it with you too, but like they don't really even know how I to never respond knew what, to it. I you're never just like, knew what to say back. You're well at first. <laughs> I felt like such uh, a yeah. turd saying, I remember the first time it happened, I was in like Spokane, Washington. I was pumping gas and I never go anywhere in my uniform because I don't like to, but I had to get gas right after work because I was about to go empty. Mm-hmm. And some guy came up to me and thanked me for my service. And I went, um, sir, I haven't even deployed yet. So you- like, I don't feel like I deserve any thanks because I haven't done anything. And he goes, no, just your service alone. Like, you know, you're sacrificing a lot. I was like, I haven't done anything, though. Like, that's a great I response, was convincing though. him. Yeah, yeah. And like before I would kind of say, oh, thank you for thanking me. Yeah. What do you say? Do you and say? now I say now I say thanks for your support. We really appreciate it because okay, I will I like say that. that. Right. I, I like say that. that because back in the day during like Vietnam and everything like that, these guys came back home and they were like spit on and yeah, treat like not shit. supported. Yeah. And so I do think like I'm very appreciative of the support and love they have for us. And that's really all I can say when someone thanks me now. I think that's probably where it started. Right. Because now it seems like we all do support you guys. You know what I mean? Like it seems like more and more, but I think the thinking of the service and all of this probably started Vietnam era, right? When they were just like, you didn't know who supported you or not. Like you look out into the crowd and like there could be people spitting at you or there could be people like It got so much better as time went on. One of the things is too, with even movies and uh, Netflix and them making, excuse me, like documentaries and stuff like that on what people really went through. People finally saw like our side of things and seeing what these men really experienced. And I think they finally got a good glimpse of like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Yeah. And they are incredible people. And so I think with now with it, there's military shows everywhere now. Yeah. Right. In movies, people see these things and uh, they're more exposed to it and they have an idea of what we're actually doing. And so before it was, they didn't know. Yeah. They only knew what the people reported. Right. Yeah. And that's about it. What um, a good, fun episode. We didn't yeah. really get into World War Three, but either did America. Yeah. So, so, um, <laughs> so we'll see. And by the time this airs, you know. Look, we we uh, recorded this a couple of days before, so we're not actually sure on the 14th where the state of things are, but yeah. we will be back on air. Um, I have a send, great... You have what? Drinking broette. Oh my gosh, please. So, this is like so generic, I feel like a little bit. What? I <laughs> think that the drinking broette of this week for episode 10, since we're launching like all of them together. We're live. I think it's you guys. Oh. And this is oh, why yeah. I say this. No, it is. Yeah. Like, I want to thank you guys for giving us a chance, for listening, for, like, sticking around to 10. Yeah. For supporting us. We promise for the love it, and it support gets better. That, yeah. like, I already know, like, a lot of my friends and people out there are really excited about this. Yeah. I want to thank you guys for, like, the love and support yes. you're going to be showing us and for listening in on number 10 and for, and I, you know, sticking with us. We fucking love you. And I think yeah. you guys deserve the hoorah. Like, woohoo. Yes. Whoop it up. Woo-hoo! Absolutely. And where can they, moves. Tiffany, where can they send their, I mean, send your drinking bro at um, nominations anywhere. I'm Jesse Wiseman on all the bullshits. Uh, mm-hmm. You're the real Tiffany Hart. But if you really want to get your nominations in, do they go to the Facebook Drinking Broettes podcast yeah, go or to drinking, Instagram. Go either or Drinking Bros okay. podcast on DM or send in a message or however you yep, want it DM. to be. Um, I also want to say that we are going to be in the Drinking Broettes group and kind of getting topics from there, but we will not say names or specifics or anything and we won't like say your story online or anything. If you do want us to post in Drinking Broettes podcast mm-hmm. and we'll think of that as, you know, kind of that you want to be you know because you guys talk about some really funny stuff but i don't want to violate at all yeah the privacy of that group so the if drinking- you post in the drinking bro it's podcast then we can kind of have a conversation on the podcast and everything we will not uh go into the private group and yeah. talk about you guys and take uh 
talk about what you're talking about and all of this because it's very personal and very real that one's gonna be a, a public page yes both of our instagram and facebook for the podcast will be a public page yeah. so that people can go ahead and see it and you guys can tag people in like little trailers and clips and stuff and so if you guys do have questions or you guys want to shout anyone out guess what we'll throw your name out there and be like what up erica <laughs> like yeah from you know rhode island because there's stuff like on the drinking broettes this girl was talking about a guy either that she dated or that she knew that wore a toe ring all the time oh my and lord the comments were just like gay i mean he likes dick i mean it was just it's just funny stuff but i don't ever want to and we will never violate you. you guys no. so if you want if it's cool with you put it on the drinking broettes uh podcast if page you, yeah. if you want us to talk about your really funny stuff and we you love you we do um you're awesome tiffany and you are just as awesome are we gonna keep wanting up each other here we Ooh, that was it that was it oh that was it good night good night <laughs> you're awesome yeah you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl i'm moving on yeah don't you better things to do yeah go buy some fucking shoes